this lake used to be filled up until Hurricane Matthew came through uh, seven months ago now, I believe. Setting up the shot. This is just crazy. And this is where I grew up. In fact, the uh, and, and you can see the ground is still very sloggy. Just doesn't dry up very well. But uh. When Hurricane Matthew came through, it broke the dam down here. It used to be a beautiful place. I've done several columns on it out here. And I grew up just a couple of hundred yards from here. So the people in this area were, you know, shocked devastated may be a good word uh, when this happened but what I'm trying to do today is document that even after something as tragic has happened to the lake here that there's still beauty to be found and I know the lake pretty well knew when it was a lake so I have some ideas of where I want to shoot I just got to get through that to get there. Um, I've already found some soda bottles in here that 40, 50 years old maybe. Um, which is kind of neat in itself. But You can see the water still streams through. And this 50, 60 years ago this place used to be bustling with people swimming and uh, even boating out here. They've had bass fishing tournaments out here. Back in that corner over there, uh, there used to be a bunch of lily pads and there was a largemouth bass in there that just was a monster and, and in fact we called it the Silver Lake Monster, us kids did, because we could never get him to bite but the few times that he did he would strip the strip our reels or uh, break the line. One case I know of, he broke the pole. So, brings back a lot of memories. Where I am, there's a group of trees that used to be in a, what we called an island back over that way. And that's what I want to get a shot of, and I'm going to get the camera set up. Hopefully we'll have some neat clouds that come through as it gets closer to sunset. Maybe I can get the shot that I want. Uh, the difficulty is trying to find a spot for the tripod. So I've kind of meandered it through so it'll kind of hold steady. But I'm going to probably throw a ND filter on here for a long exposure. The mud was too much to try and get the shots I wanted. In fact, shortly after this part was filmed, I went knee deep into the mud and had to use my arm to dig my leg out so I could move. I decided to grab the camera gear and work my way back to drier land. But all was not lost, as I had a backup plan, my drone. It is not the first time I had used the drone at the lake. On October 8, 2016, Hurricane Matthew made its way through North Carolina. In total, the storm was responsible for 46 deaths in the United States, 26 of which were in North Carolina. $1.5 billion in property damage was attributed to Hurricane Matthew in North Carolina alone, giving North Carolina its second 500-year flood in 20 years.
I was covering a football game between Notre Dame and North Carolina State the day Matthew visited. I don't recall ever being outside during a rain that was that hard before. When I got home that evening, I had my wife drive me around town so I could get some shots of the flooding for the newspaper. The next day, after the rains had left, my wife and I headed out again, this time with the drone, to capture some aerials of the flood damage. It wasn't long before the police department had contacted me, but not for me to stop, but rather for me to check certain infrastructure such as dams and properties near flood zones. ABC News in New York picked up on my photos and ran them in their various news formats. Later, the newspaper followed up with a front page feature on how I used a drone during the aftermath of the hurricane. There are many things that were forever lost, or possibly lost forever. One was the breaching of the dam at Silver Lake. The lake remains a muddy bed now with a small stream meandering through the now cracking layers of sediment on its way to Lake Wilson and Toys Not Reservoirs. The lake was also what I always consider home. While I haven't lived there since I was in my early 20s, it remains special. The lake was a big part of my life. Before there were daycares, I was practically raised beside the lake at the Wildlife Club. My parents worked for my grandfather, whose business was located beside the lake, roughly 300 yards from our home. I didn't catch my first fish there, as we had a pond that may as well have been part of the lake. In fact, during heavy rains, the pond would overflow to the lake. But I did catch more than my fair share of fish there, and I knew the lake well. When my youngest son was six years old, I carried him to the lake to catch his first fish. My wife and I hiked the trip up for a week to the point he was about to burst that morning with excitement. He caught his first, he caught his second, in fact he caught a lot of fish, and he was genuinely happy. When I was the age of his first catch, actually even a little bit younger, I would often visit the restaurant during the early afternoon to talk to the owners. Buck Dixon would always ask me what day it was, and I would always respond with, it's my birthday. He would tell me to go to the back of the store and grab a sun drop and a marathon bar, which I would quickly do. During the spring, my friends and I would hunt for turtles along the shore in the shallow water grasses. We weren't looking for big ones, we wanted the baby turtles so we could get them for pets. We even had a turtle race in fifth grade during a show and tell. My turtle was named Ulysses after President Ulysses S. Grant. We all named them after presidents and I thought the name sounded cool. We released them back in the lake after school that day. We do not always get snow during the winter in eastern North Carolina, but occasionally it would get cold enough to ice over the lake. One particular time, my friends and I ventured onto the ice back in the swamp part, and as the ice began to crack, we froze more solid than the ice we were attempting to cross. Fortunately, one by one, we all made it back to shore, but we did learn a lesson. In 
another ice over, sent our dog onto the ice chasing ice chips a friend and I were skipping across the frozen top. 100 yards out and he fell through. My dad then lumbered through the ice, breaking it with his forearms to clear a path for our dog so the dog could swim back to shore. My college roommate, who was one of my best friends in high school, had ties to land as well. Everything about the lake spelled out the words of my early life. And these were just my memories. There are many more. When something dies, something else usually takes its place. While the lake lost its water and the fish and turtles left, and maybe even the eagles that nested nearby left, there is still other life that comes back. There are other things of beauty that appear, and there are things of beauty that were already there that now have a different look and perspective. That is what I set out to capture this day. I wasn't able to get what I had in my mind due to the difficulty of trying to walk through the wet bottoms even though it hadn't rained in over a week, but I was still able to come away with something, a visit with an old friend.